In the previous lesson, we looked extensively at definitions and abbreviations and properties, uh, which are kind of difficult to digest. We're going to get more practical in this lesson. So things we looked at and what you're going to see used extensively in this lesson are all of these red abbreviations and the properties that represent them. So <clears throat> we looked at angles on a line, a point, and vertically opposite angles. We also looked at some properties having to do with parallel lines and transversals, which we will look at extensively but are difficult theoretically. Uh, we'll get more practical. And we also looked at a few properties inside of triangles. So those will all come up in this practical lesson. So if you have your study guide out, you can follow along. And you can pause this whenever you'd like and maybe make some predictions. It's always good to pause, predict, and see if you're correct. That's how we learn. All right, so the example here says name an angle that's vertically opposite to angle 10. So if you look back in your study guide, you can see that vertically opposite angles are angles that are opposite each other on intersecting lines. Okay, so if we look at this example, and I won't always go back to our definitions, a vertically opposite angle to angle 10, I'll often use highlighters, you're going to want to use pencils, just kind of erase stuff as you go. Here's two intersecting lines, so the vertically opposite angle to angle 10 is angle 12. Okay, and you will readily see me highlight things and then erase them. Two, we're look, or B, we're looking for two angles that are alternate interior to angle 13. So <clears throat> if we look at these two being parallel lines, and this is the transversal that angle 13 is on, alternate interior are angles that are inside the parallel lines but on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle 5 is one. And I'll remind you that when we did those notes, we looked at the letter Z. So here's the letter Z, and angle 13 and 5 are in the armpit. So angle 5 is alternate interior to angle 13. And another alternate interior to angle 13 would be if we used two different parallel lines. Again, you'll have to rotate your head sometimes or rotate your paper. If you look at those two parallel lines and this transversal, alternate interior to 13 could also be 11. Okay. It's just you have to start getting used to which parallel lines and which transversal to be viewing at a particular time. Uh, letter C, two angles that are corresponding to angle 1. Now corresponding, if you remember, has to do with the letter F. So if you look here, corresponding to angle 1. If we use these parallel lines and this transversal, corresponding to angle 1 would be angle 9. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they're both below their respective parallel lines. So uh, angle 9 is 1. And another one, if I, if I look at, a, at this a different way, here's the letter F right here. And you'll see that angle 3 is also corresponding to angle 1. Okay. Uh, letter D, two interior angles on the same side of the transversal to angle 6. If you remember from your previous notes, interior same side of the transversal is the letter C rule. So if we look here, if we looked at these two parallel lines, and this transversal, interior on the same side of the transversal to 6, would be 6 and 13. So 13 would be an interior same side of the transversal. Or another way we could view that would be with these parallel lines and that transversal. And you'll see a sideways letter C. And angle 6 and 7 are interior on the same side of the transversal. So angle 7 is also that. <clears throat> e, two angles supplementary to angle 8. Okay, so here's a line, and angles on a line add up to 180. So angle 7 plus angle 8 would be 180 degrees. So supplementary to angle 8 could be angle 7. Or if we viewed the line being this vertical line here, you would see that angle 8 and angle 1 add up to 180. So angle 1 would also be supplementary to angle 8. Okay, and lastly, letter F. Two angles alternate exterior to angle 4. So if we look at these two parallel lines here, what would it, and this transversal, again you can pause this whenever you like, which angle would be alternate exterior to angle 4? It's on the opposite side of that pink transversal and outside the parallel lines. So it would be this one here, okay, angle 16. And another one that would be alternate exterior to angle 4, if we wanted to use two different parallel lines, so let's use these parallel lines here, and this transversal, 
would be angle 8. It's outside of those two blue parallel lines and on the opposite side of the transversal. Okay? <clears throat> and we'll just look at these few examples, and then the next one we'll do in a new lesson. Okay? So, question number 2 says, determine the measure of each required angle in order and give the reason for your answer. So angle 2, if we had a calculator out, <clears throat> we know that angle 2 and the 128 degree angle have to add up to 180. So if I subtract 128 from 180, I would get 52 degrees. Okay, And the reason for that would be because their angles on a line, or in other words, they're supplementary. So angles on a line equal 180 degrees. So something we're going to have to get familiar with is when we find an angle measure, we also have to use the abbreviation. So that is all these red abbreviations are going to come up throughout this entire next lesson. So I'm just going to stop that here, and I'll pick up the rest in the next lesson.